Now that we've finished the rocket, let's take a look at building the altimeter bay. Today I'm going to assemble a 3 inch altimeter bay made by Lock Precision. Uh, it comes with quarter inch laser cut plywood and all the hardware parts that you need to assemble it along with quarter inch rails. Uh, they feature what they call a stiffy tube inside which is just a thick piece of cardboard here that adds a substantial amount of strength to it and not a whole lot of weight. So it's pretty good setup and the sled is also laser cut from quarter inch uh, really quality plywood here and we'll glue that together. And I'm going to use a fiberglass vent band that I already had uh, because, well, I like it. So uh, I'll mount my switch in this and drill a couple holes in it for vents. So let's get started. The glue is dry on our electronic sled and it came out really nice. Also, I have the uh, stiffy tube inside this coupler. And uh, the type of glue that I use was this uh, Elmer's Probon glue. It, uh, it works really well for things like this. There's really no need to use expensive epoxy on simple parts like this where wood glue will work just fine. Now, I prefer the Pro Bond over like a carpenter's glue, like this uh, Tight Bond 2, or really it could be any kind of yellow carpenter's glue because it's slippery and you can get the parts where you want them before it grabs and sets up. So, it's really easy to work with. I also have the vent band glued on here. Um, what I did was is uh, I put the band on there and I marked around it with an ink pen all the way around. Uh, I slid it back, applied epoxy, put it on there, rotated it a few times to make sure that epoxy spread really well on there. And one thing that you want to do is before the epoxy sets up is you want to measure this to make sure that it's even all the way around. And the same goes for, say, um, centering rings on a motor tube or anything like that because uh, you want to make sure that's straight because they can tend to rock and get off a little bit. Okay, our parts are all glued up and ready to go. Next, let's take a look at what we're going to put on the sled and put in this bay. I have the dual deploy altimeter bay ready. I have a brass charge well mounted on and the junction box. I also have the vent band drilled so I can access the electronics inside. The other side is pretty much a mirror image. I have a smaller charge well because I'm not really sure what size I'm going to need. So let's take this thing apart and see what's inside. I have this switch mounted on the top of it, as you can see here. I had to make this bracket out of aluminum to mount the switch in. This is one thing you'll have to do when you build your altimeter bay. They don't really come with set up for a switch, so you'll have to figure out how you want to make that. I just used one inch aluminum tubing here, and uh, it's easy to cut and mill. Uh, it's easy to drill a hole in it. As you can see in this piece, I've cut, cut it down a little bit in case the switch is uh, too close to the airframe tube. But in my case, I was able to use the whole one inch square here. The setup worked pretty good. The only problem was is it used all the real estate up on the bottom of the sled. Now turning the sled over, you can see my perfect flight straddle logger here mounted on the sled. I made a... Uh, a bracket here to contain the 9 volt battery. Also, I've contained it here on both sides to make sure that the battery doesn't move around or slip anyway. I've used uh, wire that has a silicone coating on the outside because it's resistant to heat. And as you can see, it passes through the bottom of here. And then I set up this uh, connector here, which works really well. I like the positive connection that it makes like that. So if I need to take it apart, I can just snap it apart. So there we go. That's our altimeter bay. And uh, when the weather gets better, we'll uh, go outside and do some tests and see exactly how much of a charge that it takes to uh, blow the nose cone off and to separate uh, the altimeter bay from the rest of the rocket body. So there you have it. And that's what it looks like. Turned out pretty good. 